Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. I work in York in the UK. And today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of left ventricular hypertrophy or LVH. I think it's Jacqueline, one of my friends on the internet, asked me to uh, do a video on this because she has been told that she has LVH and this is causing her a lot of concern. So I thought I'd do a quick video on LVH just so that you understand what left ventricular hypertrophy means um, and what to do about it. Okay, so the good news is I have a model of the heart, okay? And it's really important to try and understand what the heart's all about. If you understand the structure of the heart, you'll understand what we're talking about, because sometimes this jargon can be very difficult to understand. But basically, this is what the heart looks like, okay? Now, if you dissect the heart, if you cut the heart, this is what it looks like, all right? So here you have the left ventricle, all right? This is the main chamber of the heart so the blood comes in from here okay it comes in through comes in from these little holes here it goes in to the left atrium which is this structure at the top then you see this this is the mitral valve so the blood goes through the left atrium into the mitral valve into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it gets pumped out through this valve here okay into the aorta and this aorta is the tube, the big tube that supplies all the other blood vessels. So when you're feeling your pulse in your wrist or in your neck, it's because that, that vessel that you're feeling in your neck or in your wrist is connected to the aorta. It comes off the aorta. So the aorta is the most high pressure chamber you know, the, within the heart. So the aorta and the left ventricle, that's where all the pressure is. That's where the pulsatility is. And this, this left ventricle here, this is composed of muscle, you see? So the, the actual chamber itself has a muscular wall, all right? And that muscular wall is supplied by blood vessels. So when you look at it, you see these small blood vessels here, the red and the blue? The red are arteries and they supply um, this muscle with blood. And then the veins, are the blue ones that take the blood away. So um, blood with fresh oxygen, rich blood comes to the muscle, the muscle takes up the oxygen, and once the oxygen is taken away from the blood, it becomes bluish because it doesn't have much oxygen in it, and therefore it goes back to the lungs. So when we talk about people having heart attacks, what we're worried about is these vessels getting blocked. And if this vessel gets blocked for whatever reason, that part of the heart muscle here may not get the blood it needs and that part of the heart muscle will therefore die and if that dies then that's called a heart attack okay now what is left ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular hypertrophy is when you look at this muscle it looks thicker or more muscular than normal usually this should be no more than about one centimeter wide okay this part and this part if you find that it's much bigger than one centimeter, then it is abnormally thickened. It is abnormally muscular. And therefore you have to ask yourself, why has it become more muscular? The increased muscularity or thickening of the wall of the left ventricle is what is called left ventricular hypertrophy. Hyper meaning increased, trophy meaning increased thickness. So left ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricle, looks increasingly thick okay so generally around about no more than one centimeter uh, the dimension of this bit or the dimension of this bit should be no more than one centimeter if it's much bigger than one centimeter that is called left ventricular hypertrophy so then you have to ask yourself well why has it become more muscular or why does it look more muscular how do you pick it up? The first way you pick it up is on the ECG, because when you do the ECG, the ECG, the electricity has to go through a larger, larger amount of muscle. So the complexes on the ECG will look much bigger than normal. Then you have to say, OK, so that's one way, but that's not a very accurate way of looking at it. So the next way you can look for it is do something called an ultrasound, an echocardiogram where they put jelly on the chest and have a look at this. And if on that it looks thick, then you're diagnosed with left ventricular hypertrophy. So the next question you have to ask yourself is, why is there left ventricular hypertrophy? What, why does it develop? 
and what does it mean? What can it do to you? And basically, um, the left ventricle gets thicker or you develop left ventricular hypertrophy if the left ventricle is having to work harder. If this chamber is having to pump much harder than it needs to, then being a muscle, this muscle will thicken. It's a bit like a bodybuilder. If the bodybuilder has to do more or he's doing more, he will his muscles will grow bigger. And so there are a variety of reasons why this could get thicker. The first thing is if the pressure here in this chamber, because remember this wall, this, this chamber is pumping directly into this chamber, okay? Now, if the pressure here is high, then of course, to try and get the blood out, this is gonna have to work harder and this will get thicker. So that, when the pressure is high here, that is termed high blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure, that is by far the commonest reason uh, why people develop left ventricular hypertrophy, okay? Um, that's the first thing. The second reason people can develop left ventricular hypertrophy is, for example, this valve. You see, the, the, because the heart has to pump and then it has to go through this valve. God has provided us with this valve because otherwise the blood would go up in here and as soon as the heart started relaxing, all the blood would come back out, would come back down into the heart and not go around the body. So God has provided us with this valve. And what this mean, what this does is it opens, allows the blood to come out and then closes, stopping the blood from going back down into the left ventricle. But with wear and tear, and in particularly patients who are getting older, you can get a lot of wear and tear of this valve. And this can become very narrowed. And if it becomes narrowed, this is called aortic stenosis because it's the aortic valve, okay? And if it becomes stenosed here, if it becomes tight, that condition is called aortic stenosis. And that would mean that this chamber has to work much harder to try and get the blood through the narrowed valve into the aorta. And that condition will also cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Other causes of left ventricular hypertrophy? Well, if someone, for example, puts pinches this area, okay, so, you know, this continues down, but if I pinch this area, then of course the pressure that has to be generated to try and get the blood out is increased, and that condition where you get this pinching effect is called coarctation of the aorta, and that is actually something that people are often born with, um, where this area is narrowed and then they develop very high blood pressures, okay? Uh, another way you can develop high blood pressure is, let's say if this goes down, this will go down, this, this artery goes down all the way to supply the kidneys. And if you have a narrowing in the artery that leads into the kidneys, then that is in essence the same as being pinched, but much um, more downstream. Uh, so what tends to happen there is, again, you, the heart has to work much harder to try and get the blood through to the kidneys and therefore you develop left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, so that's what left ventricular hypertrophy is. Now there are certain other interesting things that can cause left ventricular hypertrophy. You know, when we say left ventricular hypertrophy, all we're saying is this looks thicker. Now if you were born with abnormal muscle, okay, so some people have a genetic mutation where they, this muscle becomes abnormally thick, okay? And that condition is called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So where the muscle itself is abnormal because of a mutation, and this can be become very thick, significantly thick in fact, and actually if you do the blood pressure in the patient, you say, oh, well, blood pressure is not raised, so why is the heart muscle so thick? And if it is abnormally thick, um, then that condition can be called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because it's a disease where the heart muscle becomes abnormally thickened. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is very interesting because uh, in a small subset of patients, it can be associated with um, life-threatening heart rhythm disturbances. Um, but that is only in a small subset of patients. And often you hear about athletes who may, you know, who are playing football or something, and they often, and they and they say collapse or unfortunately drop down dead. And often on post mortem, they're then diagnosed with this very marked thickening of the heart muscle. Um, and 
if that is the case, then they're diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The problem with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, is that when the muscle is abnormal, all sorts of electrical abnormalities can occur within the heart, uh, and therefore, you know, some of these electrical abnormalities can cause the heart to go very fast, and therefore the patient can collapse and degrade into a, a dangerous heart rhythm. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is worth bearing in mind. Um, what else? Uh, there are other conditions which can cause this to be abnormally thickened. Some people can get abnormal deposition of things, um, in particular people who have something called amyloidosis, uh, people who have myeloma or cancers. Sometimes they can develop abnormal protein deposition within the muscle walls and that can cause the heart paradoxically to get even weaker. So although it looks more muscular, it becomes weaker. And that is called amyloidotic heart. So what is the problem um, with this, uh, with, um, with left ventricular hypertrophy? Let's say someone tells you uh, you've got left ventricular hypertrophy. What is the issue with it? Well, there's clearly something making the heart work harder and you don't want the heart to work harder. So the left ventricular hypertrophy is a good indicator that the heart is working harder than normal. So you want to try and tackle whatever is making the heart work harder than normal. So if you have high blood pressure, you want to control that blood pressure because you don't want the heart to work so hard. Why don't you want the heart to work so hard? Because actually, the more muscular the heart gets, the stiffer it gets. So the more muscular it gets, the stiffer it gets. Now, what happens is the heart is able to contract because it's more muscular, but it doesn't relax quick enough. And if it doesn't relax quick enough, then it doesn't fill with as much blood. So when it compresses again, or when it contracts again, less blood goes around the body. And because less blood goes around to the body, particularly the kidneys, the kidneys will sense this, and they will then get into a system where they start absorbing more fluid, trying to restore the blood volume, because the kidneys automatically think if they're getting less blood, you're dehydrated. So they will then start absorbing fluid, you then get more fluid coming into the heart, uh, and the heart has more work to do with all this fluid. And slowly and gradually, as time progresses, the heart can eventually start weakening. So you don't want that to happen. Um, and that's the first thing. The other problem with left ventricular hypertrophy is that, you know, the heart is getting thicker and thicker and thicker, but the blood supply to the heart is just coming from these blood vessels here. Okay, so eventually you'll get more muscle and the muscle will start outstripping its blood supply. And if it outstrips its blood supply, then bits of the heart will start weakening because they're not getting as much blood as they need to. And that is the other problem with left ventricular hypertrophy. So yes, in the early stages, it tells you your heart is working harder than normal. If it is working harder than normal, then you really don't want your heart to be working harder than normal. So you should try and tackle those things particularly blood pressure or things like aortic stenosis, if you have aortic stenosis. Secondly, if you do let the heart work harder than normal, then eventually the heart will get stiffer and stiffer, and that will translate into less um, um, a relaxation, uh, a slow relaxation. And if there's slow relaxation, then it fills with less blood, less blood goes out, and the kidneys start getting into this system where they absorb more. Uh, and cause all sorts of um, adaptive mechanisms, which can be bad for the heart in the long run. And finally, if it gets very thick, it can start outstripping its blood supply, and that can cause the heart to paradoxically weaken because the heart muscle, this extra heart muscle suffocates. That's why, uh, you know, bodybuilders, as you can see, you know, they, they build a certain amount of muscle, and then despite everything, you can't go beyond a certain point because you can develop a certain amount of muscle and of course your blood vessels develop to try and feed that muscle but eventually if you get too big you start outstripping the blood supply and therefore the muscles actually paradoxically get weak and the heart is very similar to that. Um, the only other thing I would say is if you have unexplained left ventricular hypertrophy, I, your blood pressure is plumb normal um, and there is no other explanation, then it's always worth seeing a heart specialist to try and work out why this muscle is more thick when you can't obviously explain it by a mechanical thing. 
uh, in that setting, it may be worth having something called an MRI scan because the MRI scan actually looks at the muscle and can tell you if there is any abnormal muscle there. Uh, and it's probably the best test we have to understand what tissue looks like. The scan, the ultrasound scan that I'd recommended earlier, that just looks at the heart muscle. It won't tell you, it won't give you too much information about exactly what the muscle is composed of. Is it abnormal protein like this amyloid thing? Is it uh, abnormal muscle like the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy thing? Or is it just normal muscle which is thick? So I hope you found this useful. Um, um, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta and um, I'm going to post some links at the end of this video for my website, my Twitter feed and my Facebook page. So if you like this video, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel and sharing it uh, with your friends. Thanks. All right. All the best. Take care.